Hello, and thanks for coming to my talk at Service Mesh Con EU 2021. I'm going to be talking about Service Mesh. And this is a topic that I've been very interested in for a long time now. Um, I got involved in the Envoy and Istio communities back before Istio was even GA. And I've been working with customers and, and uh, users of Istio and other service meshes actually across the world at large and small organizations, helping them operate and productionize their service mesh and, and continue to uh, modernize their application infrastructure. And Envoy Proxy is the center of this talk today because a lot of service meshes use Envoy under the covers and for good reason. Envoy is an open source project. It's written in C++, it's very fast, very feature rich and was built with a dynamic API to drive its configuration. So no flat files and hot reloading and all this stuff. But Envoy Proxy or any service proxy under the covers in a service mesh can, is on the request path and can be kind of complicated. Envoy can be run as a sidecar, as I've mentioned, in a service mesh pattern where the proxy lives with the application instance. In Kubernetes, this would be with a pod. In a VM world, this would be Envoy living on a VM. Envoy can also live at the edge of a boundary and do reverse proxying type, uh, type load balancing and routing and so forth. And Envoy, when it's in the request path, especially for developers who are not familiar with Envoy, might see it as a black box. And this is not specific to Envoy, this is any, any service mesh data plane proxy. So what happens when things start to slow down or don't behave the way you're expecting? Um, if there are issues, how do you actually troubleshoot it? And that is one of the most important and sometimes the hardest part of operating a service mesh, which is understanding the data plane. So in this talk, we're going to take a look at a few tips and tricks that we have learned and I have learned over the years helping folks operationalize Envoy-based technologies like service mesh. So the first thing you should know is that Envoy is not a black box. Envoy is a white box. You can see into it and you can uh, glean a lot of information about what's happening inside the proxy on the request path over time. So first of all, there's an admin interface, an HTTP admin interface that you can uh, query for things like certificate information, things like what, what upstream clusters that are uh, routable and what endpoints make up those clusters. Things like changing the log levels, which will become very important as you're trying to debug things as the requests are going through Envoy. Um, and really important features like uh, being able to tap the, re the request and response chains, as well as being able to do profiling and uh, memory dumps. So there's a lot of really important functionality. If you're going to operate Envoy, if you're going to run a service mesh, you should be familiar with getting to this admin interface when you need it and understanding how to query it and how to get information out of it. The next thing you should know about uh, operating Envoy is in the certs part of the admin interface or in the stats uh, uh, part of the admin interface, there are indicators that will give you a heads up when things might start to go wrong. So one of those things that we've found the hard way is keeping an eye on when certificates are about to expire. Now, tools like a service mesh site like Istio might have a way for, uh, for doing automated rotation of certificates, but sometimes that doesn't happen properly. And checking these certain stats, uh, whether you have automation in place or not, to determine you know, if you're getting closer and closer to a cert expiring and it not being rotated when you expect it, extremely important. Another is what happens when the Envoy proxy starts to uh, come under severe load? What is the behavior that you expect? We don't want the Envoy proxy to just, to just lock up and behave you know, uh, in, in a state that, that we can't understand is unpredictable. So we can set things like the, the overload uh, manager in Envoy and, and observe it and watch it. How are, what is the pressure, what is the memory or CPU pressure that Envoy's 
uh, at right now? And what should it do when it gets to th certain thresholds? Should it stop doing keep alive on certain connections if you uh, reach a certain threshold? Should it stop accepting requests? Should it start shedding requests? And so Envoy has this, uh, this feature called the Overload Manager that allows you to ahead of time specify what happens when the proxy starts to become under pressure so you can start to reason about understand what's uh, what, what's happening here's a here's a snippet or example of what it might look like that you know you specify we're going to monitor the the heap space and if it gets to 95 percent or crosses that high water mark then we're going to disable keep alive and so what that means if if there are connections long live connections open there's not really much happening on them but we have keep alive there so that it keeps those connections open we're gonna we're gonna stop to keep alive and those connections should eventually get cleaned up if we hit 99 percent or across that high water mark then we will stop accepting new requests and so on right so you can check the documents but th there's a really uh, powerful feature uh, when running envoy another one is being able to log out to standard out or to a logging file when requests are coming into the system and log metadata about each of the requests. Things like certificates, things like uh, X forwarded four headers, uh, things like re uh, request and response, uh, uh, details of the, of the message and headers and so on. All extremely, extremely useful for um, debugging and troubleshooting when things start to go wrong in an Envoy-based environment. Another incredibly important piece to this puzzle is not just the access logs, which we talked about, so a request comes in and we can log metadata about that, but it's also the proxy itself. Enabling, so, the, so Envoy has extremely um, detailed logging levels, or, or rather different modules inside of Envoy that you can enable logging levels for. And some of the common ones around connection, connection handling, uh, what the filter chains are doing, how routing happens, how RBAC policies are applied and so forth, those can all be enabled at very fine grain levels. And things are not connecting for TLS issues for some reason, go check the Envoy logs. That will give you a very good hint, if not exactly why things are not working. And then uh, one of the last slides is you know, tuning for cloud deployments, especially in a public cloud. One, one of the most common one that uh, we've been running into and have been bit by for the last few, several years really is, uh, is how the load balancers behave in a public cloud. So if you end up running Envoy proxy on a, on a VM and you end up running a data or a control plane somewhere else, you know, connecting those things to an Amazon load balancer, you could see very unpredictable results. So being able to tune things like keep alive and uh, session and stream uh, keep alive, these things are, are very important. Um, here's a little snippet for how you might do that for an upstream cluster. So maybe you're connecting to the, the control plane for configuration updates, or you're connecting to the, an XDOS service, part of the control plane to determine authentication or authorization policies when a request comes in. Configuring these things is extremely, extremely important. And, uh, you know, like I said, these are, all, these are all tips and tricks that hopefully help you. We've learned them the hard way. Hard way. Uh, we have the, the scars to show that. Um, and if you're interested in running Envoy-based technology, either at the edge as, as in an API gateway or a service mesh like Istio, and uh, you're looking for a way to make that successful and simplify doing that, please reach out to us at solo.io. That's exactly what we work on. That's what we uh, specialize in. It's where our core competency is, um, and we'd be happy to, to help. So with that, thank you and uh, go enjoy the rest of the talks in Service MeshCon.